But today we're doing something different. So excuse my voice. I'm uh, I've been a little bit ill. Uh, some kind of flu going around, but uh, I feel okay. I feel okay. Uh, tomorrow is Sunday, and there's a, an organization here in Uppsala, the city where we live. They help refugees, people coming from uh, Ukraine who have come to Sweden in order to be safe and wait out what's going on down there, wait out the war. But at the same time, when they come to Sweden and get uh, asylum status, they get, I think it's about 45 or 50 crowns maybe from the Swedish government. I can look that up per day. And this money should last for food, for medicines, for diapers, you know, for everything. Nobody can live off of that little money. So this organization helps by collecting food and hands it out to people three times a week, I think they're open. So people travel there from all over. Uh, they sit on the bus for like two, three hours with their children in order to get to this place and pick up some food. So last summer we gave them uh, a bunch of eggs as well and some hot dogs and sausages and some meats. You got that? Bratwurst, and then there's a farlig korv längs ner and then there's a grill korv there. Ja, det är våra djur. Och det är våra ägg. Jo, det går, men det är mycket. Och vi är få som är tillgängliga. Men ni ställer upp alla frivilligt såklart liksom. Ja, det är volontärer. Och vi har också volontärer som är själva flyktingar från kriget. Som är här och hjälper människor, sina människor här. Ja, det är väldigt det är på något sätt väldigt härligt att bli som en liten familj så. Men det är tufft eftersom att vi har så mycket folk som kommer hit och ja, de behöver mat. Känslan att man är lite otillräcklig även när man ja. gör allt man kan liksom. Precis. Mm. Så, det är ju det är barn, det är väldigt, väldigt mycket barn. Det är liksom tufft att behöva tänka på att nu ska de få den här maten som liksom räcka till för dem. För mm. Det pengar de får det räcker inte till. Är det 65 kronor per dag? 61. 61? Ja, exakt. Per person per liksom? Vux, per för vuxen. en ensamstående vuxen får det. Barnet får, är det 50 kronor då per dag? Det beror på lite ålder. Det kan vara från 50 neråt. Oj, okej. Okay. Eh, och det ska räcka till liksom blöjor och hygienartiklar och mm. mat och allt. Och medicin har vi vissa också. Så. Ja. Vi vet ju alla vad det kostar idag. Och... Ja, det är inte lätt. Ja. Nej. Nej. De åker ju långt för att komma hit också. Det finns inte så många som vi som kommer ifrån från Österås. Okej, okay. ända ja. så pass långt ifrån. Ja. Wow. Så de åker ju liksom, när det har varit som varma så de liksom åker varma bussar med sina barn. Ja. Men vi gör det bästa vi kan och vi, det, vi behöver få in liksom donationer så som eran. Mm. Det är fantastiskt bra. Det är liksom en bra kvantitet också. Vi får se. have 60 we have 120 or 140 eggs that i need to pack i'm gonna pack them in these six pack of eggs mark them up give them a nice little uh thing like this we'll bring it to them uh, tomorrow uh, along with uh, a few kilos of hot dogs that we have lying in the freezer this is very personal i feel that me as a farmer i want to do good for my local community and I want to do good for the local environment and you know all these things that I've talked about in previous videos this is sort of my way of uh, investing in uh, community capital if you want to put it that way or investing in meaningful capital because it's very meaningful to help people and it's very rewarding so yeah I'm gonna spend the day with the kids now uh, later tonight I will uh, do some packing and tomorrow we will deliver some eggs and some hot dogs.
so it's Sunday and it's time to pack some eggs. We have 35 six packs of eggs here. I'm gonna take all these, put them in a, like this. Put a little label on it, like that. Then we're good to go. I really love this book. Now I don't get to read much because, uh, you know, it's hard to find the time in a day when you have kids, you have a household that needs taken care of, the farming and working off the farm and, you know, since I do everything myself. But small moments, reading a nice book. I'm particularly into graphic novels, maybe because I used to be an artist and I used to draw a lot. Somehow I have a dream that one day I want to make my own graphic novel. I would really, really love to, to put in the work, to put in the hours, to improve my techniques and draw more and tell a story through like this kind of a medium. Yeah, I love, I love it. I love it. So it's nice to take a little break every now and again. But I've had my coffee and I've read my book. So, and I packed all the eggs. So it's time. Oh, let's pack these in the car, go into town, and drop them off. So, the eggs. So we have over, what is it, 250 eggs or something? So I'm gonna get a bunch of uh, hot dogs now out of the freezer. I'm a bit late. Yeah, they're closing in an hour, and I have to drop my kids off at a birthday party first. So let's get some hot dogs. <laughs> So, I mean, what do you say? There's a mother there with two kids and, uh, you know, they're carrying shopping bags with food. This is the place. And uh, in the middle of uh, town. And they're open every Wednesday. No, Sunday and Wednesday. It's a harsh reminder of, first of all, everything that a lot most people might take for granted that we ha live in uh, in a country where there's no war that we have food in our fridge and that uh, our lives are you know pretty secure at least i feel that way uh, very blessed very lucky but uh, also at the same time you know there's a uh, yeah the world is in chaos 
and uh, people are having to flee for their lives. So it's very nice that, uh, that there are organizations that help. And I feel uh, it's a privilege for me as a producer to be able to help these people uh, distribute food to people who really need it. It makes what I do a lot more meaningful. I always get, uh, I always get really emotional coming here, seeing the children playing. They, uh, they probably don't know if uh, they're gonna come back to uh, their father, who's most likely back home in Ukraine. It hits home so, uh, so hard. When you have your own kids and you see other people who, <laughs> you know, are families that are uh, split apart. Oh, I'm sorry. I just get, uh, yeah, my heart breaks. We've done our little part, and alone you can't change the world for the better, but many people together can. So, many small streams make a river. Let's go. So as you can see, we got some snow, more waiting tomorrow, um, yeah, tomorrow evening. At about 4 o'clock tomorrow it's gonna start snowing, it's gonna snow all night. And we're expecting about, at worst they say 25 centimeters, but around here where we live I think we might get about 10. What's that? That's still about this much? It's not so much, but it's time to start plowing again and, uh, you know, clean the farm from snow. So I'm really happy and grateful for today. It's been a good day. I got the chance to uh, share our eggs and some of our meat with people who otherwise would probably never be able to, you know, buy our products because selling direct to people means we have a little bit higher price point than in the shop. And if you're coming here and you have absolutely nothing, you've left everything in your home country, my heart goes out to these people, really, so. At least I can feel a little bit happy that I've contributed to, uh, to these people who are now part of our community and we should care for them and take care of them and help them feel at home even though their home obviously is somewhere else and they want to come home and come back. But as of right now we need to make the best of this situation, you know, open our hearts. So thanks once again for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to watch the story of how I became a farmer from absol knowing absolutely nothing about farming, then you can check out a video right here. But until next time, may the road rise up to meet you, may the wind always be in your back. Take care of yourself and I'll see you next week.